So dear friends, hitherto we have seen some basics of tumor genetics and tumor immunology. Now we are going to look at tumor markers which is today's topic. So what are tumor markers? Tumor markers are biological substances synthesized and released by the cancer cells themselves or they may be produced by the host in response to the presence of the tumor. So basically they can be derivatives of the cancer cells themselves or the derivatives of the host cell in response to the presence of tumor. Most tumor markers of course are proteins. Detected in a solid tumor or in the circulating tumor cells in the peripheral blood or in the serum, lymph nodes, in bone marrow or in any other body fluid such as urine, stool or ascites. But remember that most of the tumor markers are isolated or can be tested in the serum itself. Some require the solid tumor sampling and others may require urine and ascetic fluid things like that. But majority of them are detectable in the serum. So if you want to know a little more about the nature of the tumor markers, basically they are either glycoproteins or lipoproteins produced by the tumor cells themselves or the host cells or the normal cells in response to the tumor or they may be products from the inflammatory cells and tissues in which the tumor is in pres present. They are found in the serum usually, sometimes in the urine and other body fluids. They react, these tumor markers react with man-made antibodies or combine with man-made antigens giving rise to antigen antibody reactions and complexes which can be detected by various methodologies or cytohistocompatibility reactions may be there to form cytohistocompatibility complexes which can also be detected by different mechanisms. So when are these tumor markers useful or how are they useful to us in the diagnosis of cancer and in the management of cancer? First and foremost thing is the screening. Screening refers to the technique wherein we administer the test on a large population to find out the positives and pick up those for higher investigations and confirmation. But unfortunately, tumor markers when they apply to general population will not yield very good result because the prevalence of cancer in general population will be, will be very low. In such a situation, what we do is we pass the patients through a filter, a filter of clinical signs and symptoms, a filter of tests through which a patients who are qualified to be screened only will be taken up. For example, if we want to screen for cancer of the uh, breast or cancer of the uterus, we would not be doing it in the very young children. We would age uh, will be one of the screening factors. So once we filter the patients based on certain clinical and uh, history, physical, physical examination findings, then we will get a pool of people in whom the prevalence of cancer would be higher and if we apply a tumor mark on them, the yield will be better. The second thing is early detection. Early detection is when the patients come for some symptoms, suspect the possibility of a tumor and try and administer the tumor marker test and see whether if it is positive whether it will help in early detection of an covert or underlying tumor. Whereas the diagnosis of tumors as we all know is basically on histopathology. The final diagnosis of any malignancy is on, based on histopathology. Then what is the role of tumor markers? These tumor markers will be corroborative to the diagnosis of cancer or the tumor markers will give a lead to go for the biopsy and then confirm the tumor. When it comes to the monitoring of the patient either for the treatment of it or for the prognosis or for the recurrence, these tumor markers are highly useful in monitoring the status because time and again we will not be able to afford to do costly and expensive investigations like MRIs and scans and biopsies. So, so much so the tumor markers if they are present in that particular type of cancer, 
they will be very helpful in monitoring the disease its treatment its prognosis its recurrence its relapse and all those things in this slide are listed the various possible utilities or putative uses of tumor markers as i have already told you in the previous slide screening is an important uh, aspect but to identify patients through screening using a tumor marker we need to filter the population and after the population is passed through a filter then only the screen is applied using the tumor marker this is to identify people who are having early cancer risk for the diagnosis of course confirmation is by biopsy histopathology and tumor markers corroborate in the diagnosis these may be very helpful in staging the disease and assessing uh, and stratifying the risk of the patient once the disease is staged then only we can uh, adopt the treatment methodology and make out a plan for either chemotherapy or surgery or radiation as far as prognosis is concerned tumor markers will be highly useful to predict the outcome sometimes we may find evidence of secondary metastasis in the body but we will not know where exactly is the primary in such a scenario if we do some tumor markers we may get an idea where is the location of the primary so when we start treatment of a patient of cancer in order to target the therapy and to choose the options between more than one uh, options that are available then certainly tumor markers will be helpful in titrating and targeting the therapy surveillance is nothing but follow up of the patients to detect recurrences to detect relapses and monitoring of the patient uh, by during treatment is to evaluate the response to the treatment so these are some of the various uses to which tumor markers can be put to but uh, there are certain limitations of tumor markers also uh, which we can call them the drawbacks or the negative aspects of tumor markers which we'll be able to see in our next slide before we adopt or apply any test we require to know what are the limitations or drawbacks of that particular test similar is the case with tumor markers also so what are the drawbacks the first and foremost is the heterogeneity of cancer cancer is not one disease it is not confined to one organ or system of the body there could be different types of cancers in the same type of tissue for example breast cancers may be of varieties of types there may be different types of colonic cancers there may be different types of liver and biliary cancers and cancer in general is a heterogeneous entity so to uh, expect one tumor marker to detect all cancers in the body or even to detect cancers of a particular organ or system of the body is too much we may not be able to really have a tumor marker at all like that so that is one aspect the second thing is any test to be useful should be specific and sensitive when we say specific that means there will be very few false positives whoever is positive is certain to have disease to a greatest extent when we say sensitive means people who are negative or true negatives most of the people who are negative for the test are not patients of the particular tumor or disease so some of the tumor markers lack the specificity and lack the sensitivity which means their false positives may be more so much so the specificity is lower or false negatives may be more so much so the sensitivity is lower not all tumor markers are less specific and sensitive some of them are good some of them have limitations in this area this is true with many of the diagnostic tests which we use sometimes what happens is tumor markers are elevated even in benign conditions leave alone the malignant conditions for example carcinoma antigen 125 or carcinoma embryonic antigen cea are positive even in benign diseases and not not only in malignant diseases another important aspect is smokers do have raised levels of some of the tumor markers particularly cea normal persons also have small amounts of the tumor markers for example prostate specific antigen is secreted by the normal prostate also 
So, if there is a tumor in the prostate, the level of the PSA will be very high. So, we have to depend on a cutoff level above which we can say the patient might be having a risk of cancer and below which we will say that this is uh, within the normal range for that particular tissue. Higher levels only are seen when the tumor bulk is large. When the tumor is very bulky or very voluminous, very extensive, sometimes then only sometimes tumor markers will be higher in their levels. This will again uh, is, is not of much use because by the time if the tumor volume is very large, then there would be enough clinical manifestations and evidences in the form of other investigations and we may not really uh, depend upon the tumor marker at that volume of the tumor. Some cancers never have higher levels of tumor markers. Even if the tumor is very widespread, metastasized and is stage 3, stage 4, those cancers, some of them, they never throw any and higher levels of the tumor markers, which will again give a false sense of uh, protection or satisfaction that the levels are low, so much so the disease is not, not spreading. But the other way around, the levels are low, but the tumor is spreading, we will be missing such patients. So, these are some of the drawbacks of tumor markers.